Where we wait. With the new year, we reflect and we dream. Oh, good morning. Side side, our fears are done. From Middle Percy. Yes, we dream. All the good times just begun. But turning those dreams into reality is something else. On this episode, we meet two Aussies who've escaped the rat race and call this Great Barrier Reef Island home. We feel like we are on a deserted island, like something out of Lost. This is a magic spot. So strap yourselves in. Let's do this. We've just sailed our home to Kana, up the east coast of Australia, and have just made it to the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park. And today we're anchoring off a place called Middle Percy Island, the largest of three in the Percy group. We've been living on board our floating home for about seven weeks now, but could you live here on this isolated island forever? This is Robin and Annie, and they live off-grid with their pet bird, Bushy. And this is their backyard, away from civilization. And nestled in the mangroves is their boat. They built from scratch. We'll introduce you shortly, but first, let's take you to shore. We've anchored up at West Bay, and we're going to show you around the Yacht Club, which is actually built in the 1970s, mainly by passing yachtsmen and women. It's the most interesting we have ever seen. What do you think? It's visited by boaties far and wide and covered in hundreds of homemade signs and nautical memorabilia. Well, we've just arrived to Middle Percy. We're just gonna go for a walk, and then we're gonna show you this Yacht Club. No. As we walked around the island spanning 2,000 hectares, we actually bumped into the only two residents on Middle Percy. But before we introduce you though, I need to set the scene because there are no shops here. There are no doctors or traffic lights. In fact, this is pretty much the only place on the entire island where you get phone reception. It's how you make a phone call. You gotta put your head in there and then you can talk to people from far away places. You gotta take your hat off. Hello. <laughs> and when it comes to wildlife, well, there are plenty of slithery snakes and thousands of butterflies. They're called blue tiger. They're everywhere. And then there are wild goats that were introduced by the Admiralty in the late 1800s as food for crews of sailing ships. And there are spiders, so don't forget to duck. Crazy. That's it. Is that a golden orb? Taking into account the outback critters, the vast amount of space, the absolutely spectacular beaches, and the odd yachty who swings past, could you live here? It's a different pace, but according to the leaseholders, Robin and Annie, there is always something to do, whether it be renovating or gardening or attending to the beehives. We actually bumped into them while on our walk and they told us how the drought was taking a toll on their fresh water supply over the winter. We've had none, mm. so we're getting really, mm. really, the water we have to be very, very careful oh, about. Really? It's like watering the gardens. The oh, garden's yeah, like just clay, it's just mm. rock, yeah. They have no neighbors. Instead, a pet bird, Bushy. They found him as a baby. He had, it was all little, like a little coconut, but he had no feathers on his neck. We thought, because oh, he's a baby. Yeah. Anyway, it's rang up vets, rang up everyone, and they said, oh yeah, you know, just feed, because at the time we knew nothing about birds. Yeah. <laughs> was she? Anyway, um, by four months they should oh. be fully feathered, <laughs> and by um, six months fly up. away. We've got, at this stage we're thinking, oh, he's losing more feathers than gaining them. <coughs> and then we had a vet sail through and he said the first sign, which is what he had as a baby, yeah. as a little, yeah. is the dark feathers. Right. And the dark feathers. We thought it was, dirty hands. We, we thought it was our dirty oh. hands. So we were bathing him. Oh. <laughs> we were bathing him. Thinking <laughs> if we'd get it. 
But what it is, that's their sign. It's a stress thing. And it's a spore that they pick up in the nest. Oh, wow. So he would have had that from a baby. But if he was on the mainland and taken to a vet, they would put him down. So he just lives in the homestead. Yeah, I've been hanging out But he goes everywhere with us. We take him <laughs> on the boat. If we're four, we thought, oh, yeah, we'd fly away. He's not flying yeah. up. Bushy, don't do that. And this is their boat they were talking about. It's an 80-foot catch called Joshua. They built it from the ground up. The history of this island is just incredible. In more recent times, an Englishman, Andy Martin, moved here in the 1960s and stayed for 32 years. The Hicklings family, who were sailors, also spent 12 years as hunter-gatherers even building the roundhouse from scratch. As you walk around the island, you wonder, what would it take to pack up everything and move here? Could we live like the Hicklings and raise a family here? And what would it be like to never go back to civilization as we know it? And do we really need to walk on man-made footpaths to be happy? Oh, very squidgy. Extraordinary. I think the most striking feature of the island is the white sand and the line of coconut palms on the West Bay Beach. Back at the A-frame, Robin and Annie sell produce they harvest here. Money is left in an honesty box and we buy honey and eggs as we're running low on fresh supplies. Back on board, we realise it's been a while since we've been to a supermarket. We haven't provisioned for about 10 days, so I'm having to start to use all the long life stuff. So we're getting creative in the kitchen. We can use the eggs that we got from Middle Percy, the wild chicken eggs. And it looks like I have a helper. I just have to film this and have a record of you in the kitchen. Cause this is the first time you've been in here for three, three months. And- I made ravioli <laughs> and I made you a tea. But we're making fresh bread first time. And over here, I'm making pancakes. I need to make sure that they are okay though. I'm gonna do the test. The test, egg edition. First, fill a glass of water, place in a raw egg, and if it sinks, it's good to eat. Alright, I hope we don't get salmonella. You just crack them straight in. That's what it said to do. Straight in. It said. That looks like a mess. <laughs> I don't think they're the best pancakes. It was your first go. It was my first go. We can only get better from here. Recipes never turn out just right on the first go. Oh, thanks, babe. Question, can you keep pancake batter in the fridge and then use the batter the following day? Or is it better to just cook all the batter and then eat cooked pancakes the following day? I've decided just to keep eating them. <laughs> What do you think about this? Yeah, it's good. While baking the bread, John and I plan to make a message in a bottle to leave at the Yacht Club, AKA the Percy Hilton. All right, I think I've got everything we need. What? Stunning morning.
See, boaties who visit usually leave their mark by hanging a memento, a piece of memorabilia in the two-story A-frame. Plaques display the names of crew members and the date. You could literally spend hours here just reading the notes and the names of boats that have been here before us. This one has been here since 1981. Keith Hill and Joe Hill from the USA. It's a tradition that's been happening for decades, since the 1970s. What are you going to write? Okay, what are we writing? you got a mosquito flying around your head. Okay, so, what do I write? There once was a girl named Christina. Why did we embark? Really quite the dreamer. <laughs> Why did we embark on this? She quit her job. Yeah. Paint it back her fob. Oh, I know what you can do while we're here. Can you burn that on the, on the side? Get set wet. fire to the hut. What are you grateful for? Coffee. Honestly. Fresh milk. Look at that. How good is that? Oh, that looks good. Oh, hang on. No. You already screwed it up. Have I? Yeah, it's terrible. Oh, no. Can you fix it? Because I thought... Oh. Can you do it? Yes. This is great. Okay, that was lucky. Oof. Making memories. Up the right way. A moment in time. <laughs> it'll unfold with time. Do it? Yeah. Our next job was to find a spot to hang our sentimental contribution. In the note, John wrote something about turning lemons into lemonade in reference to coronavirus and the lockdowns and turning this past year into something special and memorable. I love it. I love your knots. I just love it. Let's see if she's a photo. And as the sun went down, the sailboats, a silhouette in the distance, us sailors gathered for sundowners. A drink as we said goodbye to another day because tomorrow we're off to a new location. So we are just motoring to the other side of Great Keppel at the moment because the winds are changing direction. They're gonna be heading to the north northwest. So on the other side of Middle Percy, it's protective. So we've just found ourselves a really beautiful little secluded beach and we're going to anchor up. Um, this morning, we also caught some garfish. <laughs> I caught one garfish, John caught four, but one got away. That's all right, we've got dinner tonight. Yum. Better get my shoes on to anchor up. On the other side of the island, protected from the swell, we felt extremely isolated as there were just four yachts anchored and not a human in sight. No one here on this beach except for us. It reminded me of this quote I had read recently. The only impossible journey is the one you never begin. It's kind of like one of those pitch me moments where you think about life and you think about work. I don't know, stopping your career and, and making that call to quit and leaving it all behind. And then in this moment, realizing that it was the right thing to do to have this one year break and just explore and see our backyard. And you know, a lot of these states here in Australia are disconnected from each other. So we're feeling really lucky and blessed to be here right now. We are in our element. We feel pretty happy that we can share this with you guys and I hope it feels like you're here with us too and I really hope these videos are a bit of escape for you guys as well and that you feel like you're enjoying it with us and experiencing it with us. I've been trying to be my own guiding star but it appears it hasn't taken me very far. Just behind us are the most insane sand dunes. You know when I look at those sand dunes, what I think of? What do you think of when you look at those sand dunes? The ability to be able to surf down them. There's just one problem. We don't have anything to slide down them. I'm just saying and there are it. sand dunes there. Yep. And I think this would make the perfect board. What is that? I don't know, I found it in the garage. 
Do you think it's important? No, it's just a plank of wood. Well, I think we just take one of the doors off the <laughs> door frame. It's just a plank no, of wood. No, but can we please use this? Yeah, and I'll take one of the doors off. <laughs> this is this goes in the lazarette. No one sees it. What does it do? It stops people from being able to access the... Um... It stops the fenders from getting stuck in the steering mechanism. Yeah, but they're not there now. If they're not there now, then it's unnecessary. We don't need them. Yeah, we don't need doors either, really, do we? I want to go sand tuning. Can we please go sand tuning? John was not only concerned about the conservation aspect, but the environment too, and understandably, rubbish litters these pristine Great Barrier Reef Islands, despite being a UNESCO site. There's a sign about rubbish, right, on the beach. There was plastic everywhere, big and small. But we did meet a group of environmentalists on this trip. They're volunteering to clean up these islands. We met them in the A-frame while making our message in a bottle. Morning. 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 How are you? Doing What's your boat called? Oh, I'm. We're just sort of collecting marine debris, so. Oh, I thought I'm, that's what you guys um, might have been doing. That's yeah, cool. Yeah, oh, cool. my lady from Alley Beach. Nice. Yeah. How good that. Yeah. Is that yeah. all from there? Ah, uh, yes. Wow. Did yeah. you go along the beach and pick it up, or? Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. That's actually sad too. It is. Yeah. It's amazing how much is out there. It's a real eye opener. Wow. Yeah. We'll take it back and count it and and weigh it. Oh, good on you guys for doing that. Yeah, that's really yeah. amazing. Yeah. We should start doing a bit of that yeah, too. Yeah. Yeah. I saw someone post something about like saying like if every cruiser took a couple of garbage bags and just picked up yeah. some stuff each time yeah. they stopped. Yeah. You know, it's real concerned about our the next generation. Yeah. Microplastic, it never breaks down, it breaks up. So it yeah. just breaks up to smaller pieces. And then it's hard to get rid of, yeah. so yeah, you yeah, can't. You want to eat a fish out there. Well, now's the time to do something about it, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's right. Anyway, enjoy the rest yeah, of your journey. Cool. Yeah, Thank cheers. You John and I were so amazed and so inspired. And so we approached them and we got talking and we actually exchanged numbers. And in a couple of weeks, you have to watch this upcoming episode. Liz from Whit Sunday Sailing takes me on board her tall ship to go coral monitoring. It's so incredible. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that upcoming episode. So it is our last night here on Middle Percy. I'm really sad to be leaving this island. We've had such an incredible time. I will never forget the moment we stepped off on the beach and walked into that yacht club. Gosh, all the memorabilia, all the sailors and the people who have come here before us and all that history. It was so touching to be able to leave also our mark there. Leave a little piece of Takana on this island. It's our little mark in history. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much for watching and your support always, especially to our patrons. And if you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thanks for being part of the crew. Oh, that one has a little bit of milk in it.